Hello. Are you guys here to figure out how the sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride reduction mechanism works? Well, if you are, then good. And pay close attention, because that's exactly what we're going to do, OK? So hopefully you guys have learned from lecture already that sodium borohydride, or NABH4, and lithium aluminum, lithium <laughs> and lithium aluminum hydride, or LIALH4, are both pretty good reducing agents. But NABH4 is a bit weaker, and it can only reduce ketones and aldehydes down to alcohols, and it will have no effect whatsoever on carboxylic acids. On the other hand, LIALH4, lithium aluminum hydride, has, is quite the opposite. It's really strong, and it can reduce carboxylic acids, uh, aldehydes, ketones, all down to alcohols. All right, it's pretty cool, actually. Um, and if you guys are interested in understanding exactly why these two reducing agents are, are different and why NABH4 is weak and why LIALH4 is strong, then make sure you guys check out my next video that's coming up right after this. Um, but in order to understand the, the, the difference, you need to first understand the mechanism. And in order to understand the mechanism, I need you guys to first draw out the structure of your two reducing agents, OK? So take a couple seconds, hit pause if you need to, and come back after you've drawn the two reducing reagents, NABH4 and LIALH4, OK? Hit pause. Alrighty, did you guys get these two structures for your reducing agents? If you did, good job. If you didn't, um, hopefully you guys got something similar. What you should have gotten for NABH4 is boron as the central atom with four hydrogens around it, and then boron has a negative charge, and then the whole point of sodium here is just to act as a counter ion, sitting on top of the negative charge. And then for LiAlH4, same thing, aluminum as the central atom with four hydrogens surrounding it, and lithium as the, as the counter ion this time to counterbalance the negative charge of the aluminum, OK? So now it's time to do the mechanism, right? All right, so first step, what do you guys remember from lecture? What? Perfect. So this first step might be kind of weird for you guys right now because you guys may not be used to seeing hydrogen attacking in mechanisms. Usually hydrogen's being attacked and pulled off, but that's exactly what happens in these re reducing reactions or reduction reactions. Hydrogen is actually more electronegative than both central atoms. It's more electronegative than boron, and it's more electronegative than, than um, aluminum, meaning that hydrogen's pull and tug on electrons is stronger than boron and aluminum. So even though boron has a negative charge and aluminum has a negative charge, the electrons are actually closer to hydrogen, and they're being pulled away by the hydrogen. So in the attack, hydrogen basically um, takes the two electrons in the bond between it and boron, takes it, and attacks, OK? So hydrogen's going to, so when you do your mechanism, right, you start from your boron-hydrogen bond, and then you go to the, you attack the carbon of the carbonyl, all right? You're attacking the carbon of the carbonyl because that's the most vulnerable carbon in, this, um, in the beaker right now due to the resonance that can occur at your carbonyls. The, the, the double bond can, um, can, resonate, can resonate up usually. And when it does that, it puts a negative charge on the oxygens and a positive charge on the carbons. Making it more vulnerable to be attacked by your hydrides, OK? And by the way, this reaction is happening in like separate beakers. You, you're, it's not like one molecule is attacking both your ketone and your aldehyde. It's like this is happening or this is happening. All right? I just didn't have enough space to draw two um, sodium borohydride molecules. OK? So now that happens. And then for lithium aluminum hydride, right? same thing. You start from the bond, because hydrogen is grabbing the electrons in the bond and tugging it, and then using it to attack on its own, basically. And then when you attack the carbonyls, right? all three carbonyls, the carbon already has four bonds. So that carbon's happy, but now it's getting a fifth bond. So it's getting overloaded with too many electrons. So now the, the double bond is going to swing up, swing up, and swing up. All right. So then what do we get from here then? Take a second and draw your product. All right. So here we have our ketone after the attack. Carbon, carbon, carbon. And then we have a single bond over here, right? 
oxygen up here. It has a ne uh, positive or negative. It should be negative because it got electrons from before. And then I'm just going to draw in our new hydrogen buddy that just came in over here. Okay. Next is our aldehyde. So our, this is our aldehyde, carbon, 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 and then the hydrogen from the aldehyde from before. A single bond, once again, oxygen, negative charge because it got electrons. And then we draw in our new hydrogen from the sodium borohydride right there. And now for our carboxylic acid, we have our carbon, carbon, um, carbon, carb, uh, OH group from before. We have our oxygen. I'm going to give it a negative charge. And then the hydrogen that just came in from the sodium, uh, the hydrogen that came in from the uh, lithium aluminum hydride. OK? So now you guys should have this. Yeah, sorry about the crowdedness over there. <laughs> But uh, basically, what happens now is that the sodium from before, it's going to come on over here and stabilize this, this oxygen with a negative charge because that's what counterions do, okay? And then we're basically done with this part of the reaction, at least for now, okay? So the carboxylic acid mechanism is going to be a little bit different because of this OH group over here. And the fact that the carboxylic acid reacts a little bit differently what can happen instead for this part here is that before the lithium can come in and stabilize the oxygen, right, the electrons will resonate down really, really quickly and actually kick out this OH group over here. It's, it's sort of, um, this happens a lot in acyl reactions. So hopefully you guys have learned that already. If not, you guys will probably learn that soon. But what do you get from here then after this happens? You should get this molecule over here, or a aldehyde basically. Now, the OH group got kicked off, so I just swung my hydrogen over. That's over there. I reformed my carbonyl because the electrons came down, right? And now we have an aldehyde. So you basically go back to this step over here. And now another equivalent of lithium alu aluminum hydride will come in and do this type of attack to reduce it down to this form, all right? So um, instead of drawing another molecule of lithium al aluminum hydride, I'm just going to save time and use this guy over here. And I'm just going to show that, OK? All right, so that's going to happen. And then these electrons will swing up. And then you will generate this product over here. It looks really similar to this, right? Well, that's because it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, so our carboxylic acid, because it's a little bit more complicated, it needs to get reduced essentially twice by the lithium aluminum hydride. And now all three molecules are basically in this phase. And now this is the step that many students forget, but do not forget, you need to do this at the end because you don't really have alcohols yet, right? You just have this, um, oops, I forgot to draw the lithium here, counter ion stabilizing it, but you just have oxygens with negative charges. It's not alcohols yet. So what can you add in here to quench the reaction and add hydrogens onto all three oxygens? You guys are probably, you guys are hopefully have heard of this, hopefully have heard of this from your professors, but you add acid and you quench your reaction, okay? So basically you guys can add a little bit of acid into your beaker and quench the reaction. So we do step two, add in H3O, so hydronium, H3O plus, and what can happen is the negative charge can essentially, or the electrons can reach over and attack the hydrogen and turn these molecules into alcohols at long last. Okay, take the hydrogen. So just to reiterate, do not forget this last step over here, okay? Because students always forget this last step. You must quench the reaction with acid. So that's H3O plus or HCl and water because that's going to give you H3O plus anyways, okay? And that'll, what, that'll, that's what's actually going to give you your final alcohol products, as you can see over here, okay? So yeah, we get secondary alcohols when we reduce ketones because the ketone it already has two carbon bonds here that it can't break, and you can only shoot in one more hydrogen right there so secondary alcohol. Primary alcohol is from aldehydes because there's already a hydrogen there, one carbon chain. It's not going to lose those. So you can only shoot in one more hydrogen right there to get a primary alcohol. And carboxylic acids, we have um, primary alcohols as well. Same exact products because we can shoot in two hydrogens because the first one can go in fine and then the OH group will get ejected. So then we can shoot in another hydrogen. Okay. 
And just to review, sodium borohydride can only reduce ketones, aldehydes cannot reduce carboxylic acids. Lithium aluminum hydride can reduce all three down to alcohols because it's strong. All right, so um, I purposely drew the hydrogens with different colors. These hydrogens are all black because, as you know, they came from the acid at that last step. And then for your ketones and aldehydes, these blue hydrogens here came from the very first step from the sodium borohydride, okay? And then for our carboxylic acids, um, these two red hydrogens over here are from lithium alu aluminum hydride, okay? Because carboxylic acids get attacked twice. Attacked twice. Attacked twice. By the hydrides, okay? So um, yeah, I hope this video was helpful. I know it got kind of crazy towards the end with all this stuff, but um, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to just ask me in the comments down below. If you guys are interested, like I said in the beginning, about understanding why sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride are different in their reactivities, despite the fact that their mechanisms for reduction is basically the same, right? Then just make sure you check out my next video, which is coming up, uh, the link of which will be at the end of this video, so just stay tuned. If you guys are interested on the, about the wolf kishner reduction, make sure you check out that video too. I'll have the link to that at the end of this video as well, as well as in the comments, no, in the description box down below. All right, so as always, if you guys like this video, make sure you guys like it down there and tell your friends. Uh, make sure you get subscribed if you wanna get updated when I make new videos. And um, I guess I will see you guys in another video then. Okay, bye. Oh yeah, acid. Oops. Um, but in order to understand the, the, the difference, you need to first understand the mechanism. And in order, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and in order to same exact products when we reduce carboxylic acids, okay? And sodium borohydride, once again, can only um, reduce ketones and aldehydes. Um, well, let's see. Correction. Um, geez, that was annoying. Um, and sodium borohydride can only reduce ketones and aldehydes. They cannot reduce carboxylic acids um, carbo versus... Um, what am I saying here? Lithium aluminum hydride, however, can reduce ketones, aldehydes, carboxylic acids. Does not matter because it's strong. Hello. Are you guys here to figure out how the lithium <laughs> sodium borage? <laughs> Damn it. Okay. Okay. So, um, yes. All right. Already. Already. Alrighty, did you guys get these two structures for your reducing agents? If you did, good job. If you didn't, um, hopefully you guys got something similar. 